Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Tony Porter, Tabletop Dice Baseball. And we are joining the action here in the Fall Classic game. It's uh, St. Louis at New York. And the pitchers are Sadeki versus Tom Murphy. We're, we're in the bottom of the second. And uh, let's see. Quickly here. All right. And it's uh, Cleon Jones leading off in the bottom of the second for the Messi to see what they can do. Uh, Sadeki got off to a rough start, to say the least, in the first inning. Gave up a couple of runs on five hits. And uh, Milner reached base on a single. He stands at first base. And here's uh, Cleon Jones. Cleon Jones, not much of a hit and run guy. And um, and he's, we're not going to bump with him because he does have a little bit of power. Hit 11 home runs and 300 bats. So that you know, would have been 22 home runs over the course of a whole season. Of course, he, he was injured on and off in the 1973 season. So let's do this. Tom Murphy gets the sign from Simmons. Simmons is behind the plate. You got Reitz at third, Tyson at second, size, uh, Tyson at short, Sizemore at second, and Torrey at first. Brock in left, Melendez the center fielder, and Carbo in right field. And here's the pitch. Oh, that's a 33. So that's going to be ripped for a single. And the runner will stop at second. It was hit so hard right up. At Melendez, who just fielded it on a hop and got it in quickly to Tyson. So they're going to hold up Milner. And we're going to click on that single. We got first and second with Wayne Garrett coming up. Wayne Garrett uh, has had a good season so far. He's batting 268 with 12 home runs. His RBIs did not pop up on my screen. When, uh, on, on the screen, unfortunately, I, I wish they did. Um. But uh, this is a good opportunity for the for the Mets now. First and second, nobody out here. They're, they trail by two in the bottom of the first. Now, Garrett has both power and he is a good bunter. And that's kind of been the, the uh, fork in the road, if you will. You got to decide which avenue you want to take with him. Um, it's no, There's nothing worse than... than you know, squaring a bunt and then missing out, uh, rolling a home run roll, right? But we're gonna we're gonna bunt right here. We got a couple of batters behind him, Ted Martinez and Duffy Dyer, that we're hoping can uh, hit a fly ball. We're probably they're probably gonna play back and let a run score, so uh, that would pick us, uh, get us a run. So um, we're gonna try that. We're gonna try to bunt. Wayne Garrett, he squares and it's a good bunt. If the catcher's going to pick it up, he's going to go up first. So it's a successful sacrifice. Both runners move up. And no, it was not a home run roll. And uh, it's going to be Duffy Dyer coming up. Duffy Dyer, long-time Met, long-time Pirate. Not much of a hitter, but uh, every so often he'll stroke one. If he uh, you know, gets the right pitch, we'll see what happens here. It's second and third. The infield is going to play back. Um... Going to concede the run right here for an out. Want to prevent that bigger inning. So, uh, you know, in this case, I, I'm I'm kind of inclined to say, well, Duffy's not going to get a hit, but he may hit a ground ball. And if we're back, runner will probably advance. But it always, if we're in, it, it runs the risk of scoring two runs. So um, we're going to... Uh, Playback allow the run to come in. So if there's a ground ball, let's say, and there also may be a fly ball, a sacrifice. Let's see what happens here. Tom Murphy pitched to Duffy Dyer, second and third, one out. All right, it's going to be a 45. It's going to be an out of 15, which is a ground ball to third. This is probably going to hold a runner. Runner on, th runner on third scores on this one. So runner on second will hold. Runner on third was going on contact so he will come in and the Mets pick up a run so our plan worked out perfectly and now uh, oh I gotta go back because uh, 
I got to go into detail to be able to keep Jones. So I'm going to do a 5, 3. And uh, he comes home. Well, no, he, he, he holds. And then he comes home. There you go. Perfect. And now it's Ted Martinez coming up. Now, um, Sadeki is a decent hitter at 225 clip. So we're going to face Martinez. 225 versus 255, that's 25 points. We are going to face Martinez here. And uh, Murphy gets a sign from Simmons. He sets, looks over at Jones. Jones has his lead. Tyson is right up behind him. And here's the pitch. And that is a 32, which will be a tapper right back to Murphy. He feels it. Over to first. Side retire. Let's go to the top of the third. Fall Classic Baseball. Ted Simmons leads off. Simmons in the replay. Is batting 315. Here's the pitch from Sadeki, 55. That's a drive in the gap, and Han is after it. And will he get to it? No, it's one hop off the wall and digging for second is Simmons, and he slides in there safe with a double. Lead off double for Ted Simmons. Is he not in the Hall of Fame, Ted Simmons? I'm not sure. Should be in the Hall of Fame. So Ted Simmons with the leadoff double here in the top of the third. He stands in second base, and it's Joe Torre. Joe Torre still with the Cardinals in 73, 1973. Great retro season to replay, except don't expect the Mets to do very well. They were only three games above 500, or was it two games above 500? I think it was three. And uh, Sadecki looks over at Simmons, gets the sign from Dyer, sets, and a pitch to Torre. And that's going to be a 26 against a lefty. That's going to be a base hit. And that's going to, unless there's an S-arm, and I don't think that Cleon Jones is an S-arm left. I think he's just an average arm left. Let's see. Let's double check. Cleon Jones. I have a chart for Dumpter's cards. He is an average arm. Yes. So that will allow Simmons to score. Rough, rough. So, um, Torrey rips a single to left. Jones cuts it off. And scoring is Simmons. So it's 3-1 to one now. And uh, here's Kenny Reitz, Ray Sadecki. With the pitch, looks over at Torrey. Torrey, not a base thief at all, so does not have a big lead. Here's the pitch. And that's a 56 and Ken Reese does not strike out very much, so he's going to tap it right back to the mound. An S starts a double play, an S arm, but Zadecki has an A arm. So it's going to be uh, one, we're going to go one six on this result. And uh, Reese trades places with Tori. You know what? In, in this case, because we have we have one and we have eleven that's that are ground out to the pitcher, um, we're going to interpret this as a one-three simply because an S starts a double play. So I I I'm kind of reasoning that if you're not an S, you're not going to try the double play. You're just going to go to first. So we're going to switch that up, go back and do a one-three. And uh, Tori gets the second base. Let's see. All right. So uh, Carbo's on uh, up at the plate. Takes a couple of practice swings, steps in the box, and uh, Sadecki's ready to face the lefty. Now Carbo, he batted 286 in the replays, batting 277. Here's a pitch from Sadecki, who's not pitched well today, and that's outside ball four, and he walked Carbo. So Sadeki struggled has so far in two and a third inning. He's uh, given up seven hits, a couple of walks, three runs. But uh, we need him to hang in there a little bit longer. He still has uh, uh, some endurance left. So Tyson, Mike Tyson. That's right. And he's going to face Sadeki with first and second in the pitch. And it's going to be a potential... 
Ground ball hit hard at Martinez. Flips to Mian. Mian over to Milner. 6-4-3. Double play. And they turn it. They get out of the inning. Twin killing. Prevents any more damage. So good job by the Mets defense. And um, we go to the bottom of the third. Sadeki leads off. And here it is. The pitch from Murphy. Sadeki can hit. That's a error check on here. So let's uh, let's do that. Uh, 52 on the second baseman. A 15 is going to be way too high. So that's ground out, and uh, that's Sizemore plays that easily. Don Hunt now. With 46 and a 12, that's popped up. Right side, Torrey in foul territory. And he hauls it in for the second out. Now it's Felix Mian. Mian's batting 275. In reality, he batted 290, but he's been on a tear as of late. Here's a pitch from Murphy, 56. And that's lifted to left field, so... Shallow left, Brock and Tyson, and it's Brock who calls them off. That retires the side. Go to the top of the fourth. 3 1, Cardinals. Pitcher Murphy leads off against Ray Sadecki. Sadecki with the pitch. And that's going to be bounced up the middle, and that's through in the center field. Hit number eight allowed by Sadecki, and Brock is up next. Brock has a stolen base today. What a surprise. He, he stole a bunch of bases. 70 and 90 attempts. Wow. And uh, Murphy, not much of a speedster. He's a slow, so we'll see what happens here. Pitch and a 14, and that's going to be a ground ball. Second base, Mian goes to Martinez. Back to first. 4-6-3, double play. Number two in the game for the Mets. So two outs now, nobody on. And here comes Ted Sizemore. Sizemore back 279. Out of two, two, what does that say? The only thing small on these cards are the uh, the stats at the bottom. That's a 282. So he's back 279. Um, in reality, about 282 on the season. So not having a bad season, Ted Sizemore. And he gets to see why uh, Sadeki winds and deals the pitch. And the snake eyes will be with 12. It's ball four. He walks him. And he's got potential for a steal or a pickoff. And it's got, there he goes. Uh, 1 1 12. There he goes. And he is with a 12 10 safe at second base. So that's a walk and a steal for Sizemore. I mean, did Sizemore steal that season? Sizemore stole 8 8. What is that? Six. Six bases. Gets one here. All right. And it's Luis Melendez with the runner in scoring position. So the cards have managed to get the second base on several occasions. And two out singles have, have cost the Mets some runs. So let's see what Melendez does if he can continue the Cardinal clutch hitting. Pitch. And 23 is not going to do it. He swings and misses at a high fastball. And that ends the inning. So, Melendez struck out by Sadeki. And we go to the bottom of the fourth. Let's see what the Mets can do. They're down 3-1. to one. And um, the offense has, has not shown up yet for the Mets. They, they may still be having breakfast. Rusty Staub is going to lead off. Rusty Staub batting 309. Rusty batted 280 in the regular season. But uh, he was batting around 260 for a while. And just been batting over 400 in the last 10 games. Here's a pitch from Murphy. And a 41 is going to be ball. Oh, no. It's going to be bounced to third. And reads up with it and throws out. Rusty doesn't have great speed. John Milner's up next. And the pitch. And it's a 35, which will be a check swing. A little bloop over Sizemore. Will Sizemore get it? No, it drops in in front of Carbo and... Just beyond the outstretched glove of Ted Sizemore. So Milner's on with his single, his second single. Let's check the box score. Yeah, he's two for two on the day. Milner's batting 241. Milner batted 239 in reality. So here is Cleon Jones. Cleon Jones batting 276, batted 260. So let's see if the Mets can get something going here. And uh, Murphy. 
checks Milner first and gets a sign from Simmons. He's ready, sets, and deals. And that's 22. That is going to be ball four. So he walks Jones again. That's with first and second. Here comes Wayne Garrett. And this time, Wayne Garrett's going to be swinging away. Before he came up first and second, nobody out. This time he's coming out. He's coming up with one out. So we're going to allow him to swing away here. Hopefully we can uh, he can launch one. That would be good news. Although it, uh, Tom Murphy does not give up a lot of home runs off his card. It's only a one or a two on a D20. But Wayne Garrett can knock one out of the park on a one to eight on his 66. So we'll see what happens. A little... Uh, Channeling a little bit of APA, right, when I said home run 66. And here's Wayne Garrett, the pitch from Tom Murphy. And that's a 22. That's a positive result, and that's going to be ball four. And Garrett, who walked 72 times in 73, collects another one here, one of the walk leaders for the Mets. And up comes Duffy Dyer again. So Duffy Dyer has driven in a run already with a ground ball and gets a chance here to drive in another couple of runs even. If he can get the bat on the ball, which is not always easy for Duffy. Duffy, not a, uh, you know, very good hitter. We'll see what, what happens. Tom Murphy gets the sign from Simmons. And he's ready and deals, and that's going to be a 35, which will be a ground ball, and that's through the left side. Let's see the effect. So this may be a play at the plate. Assist chance with runner trying to score if two are out. There's only one out, so um, two runs will score. And moving to third is Garrett. And it's going to be Ted Martinez. So the game is tied thanks to Duffy Dyer, who in this game has driven in all three runs. Isn't that nuts? He's a 180 hitter. And uh, here's Ted Martinez, Garrett, third base. The corners will be in here. Corner, well, actually, Ted Martinez did not hit into a lot of ground balls. So we're going to bring the whole infield in and see what happens. Here's the pitch from Murphy. And a 22 is going to be a line drive base hit. And with a 16, that's going to be run with risk going from run with risk. That's going to be going from first to third. So we are going to play it safe with Rusty. And the Mets take a 4-3 to three lead. So Ted Martinez coming up huge, replacing uh, or Taking the place of Bud Harrelson, who is injured, here is Sadeki, and we're going to let Sadeki bat. Tom Murphy is going to get a visit from the pitching coach and the catcher, Simmons, trying to sell him down. It's got been roughed up a little bit here in the bottom of the fourth, giving up a single walk, walk, single, and another single. So three singles and two walks lead to three runs for the Mets, and they've taken the lead. The crowd is ecstatic here, as you can Hear them in, uh, let me see, where's my crowd? Sound options, I'm on my, my crowd now, oh, volume. All right, what is it, play tabletop sound. Let's see if I get it back. I doubt it. I don't know if it starts in the middle of the game, but it will start at the beginning of the game or the beginning of the next inning. We'll see. Here's Sadeki pitch. And Sadeki with a fly ball right field. And that's shallow. Carbo holding up his dire. Does not have that kind of speed. He's not going to tag up very often. And here's Don Han. That's right. He has a local Chinese restaurant. Very proud of that. And uh, Don Han is up. And uh, Murphy pitches 14 and that's going to be a ground ball to short Tyson over to first and that retires the side Mets pick up three and uh, Sadeki is uh, get, becoming fatigued in our help with our helper our helpers tell, telling us hey listen 
Sadeki is uh, fatigued. So, but in the actual rules of the game that I'm playing, he's not fatigued yet. So we have to, I, I kind of balance between both of them because what, what the helper is doing is uh, kind of uh, monitoring the innings pitched. And if I pitch him, he may have gone longer in the previous games. And now I need to have him have a short game so he can keep within the innings that he actually used that season. So, um, yeah, he's faced 21 batters. He's allowed to face 27. So I'll let him go one more inning and then I'll pull him. But when does he, did he just bat? Yeah, he just batted. So, all right. Um, so it's going to be Simmons leading off against the decky. And a 43 is going to be bounced to second base and Mian throws him out. Tori, Joe Tori, right handed hitter, pitch, and that's a swing and a miss. Curveball gets him. So Sadeki is reaching back for a little extra here, although the helper says he's uh, becoming fatigued. Doesn't look like that to me, but he may be reach, reaching back for the last little bit that he has left. And here is Kenny Reese. The pitch to Kenny Reese with a 56 and checks his swing, and they check with the first base umpire, and he rings him up, and Reese does not like that. No, sir, he does not like that at all. But that's going to end the inning here at the top of the fifth. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Felix Mion. Going to be leading off against Tom Murphy. Tom Murphy, again, not a guy who, who goes deep into games, but we're only in the bottom of the fifth. Uh, neither is Sadeki. These are not big inning guys. These are like 100 inning guys at that time. So they don't go deep into games. They don't complete a lot of games. Sadeki had one complete game, and uh, Murphy had two complete games on the season. So Mian's going to. Now Mian chokes up about eight. 10 inches on the bat. Very, very unique. Um, and known for that, right, historically. Known for being the king of choking up. Line drive guy. And he strokes a single right here. Rips one to left, and that's Brock coming over. Throws it into Tyson, and that is Mian with a single. That's going to bring up the lefty hitting stop, rusty stop, Legrand Orange. Picked up from the Montreal Expos by the Mets. And he stays with the Mets, I, till, I think, until 77, 76. And then he goes over to the Tigers. So I'm not sure if it's a four- or five-year contract. I'm not sure what, or how the contracts are working. It's still 73, so he wasn't a free agent. I know the first free agents were Messerschmitt and uh, Hunter by accident. Um. So here goes. Mian is on it first. We're not going to hit and run with Rusty because he did. Uh, he, he has some decent power. And well, actually, you know what? And against this pitcher, we are going to hit and run. And there goes Mian. And that's line. Base hit right through the hole. Works perfectly. And that's going to send Mian to third. Wow. So lucky I made that decision. But uh, with, with anybody that has just a little power in this game, based on Murphy not allowing very many home runs. It's just better to opt for the hit and run uh, just to make contact because you're not going to send the ball out of the park against Murphy on his A column. So he did not give up many home runs. On his C column, he doesn't even give up many home runs. He's only, um, what is that? Uh, a 40% chance? to give up a home run even on his worst days. So, uh, all right, so it's John Milner steps to the plate, and the Cardinals are going to look toward the bull bullpen already. We're going to see who we have because uh, the Mets have figured out Tom Murphy. We've got a couple of guys we can bring in. The longer-ending guy here is Segui, but he is also our main closer. we got, uh, what else we got? We've got some short-ending guys. Actual innings pitch, 56, got 32, 46, 58. Uh, everybody's right where they should be. Got Rich Folger. Folker starts the next game, so we can't use him. 
Robowski is a guy that goes doesn't go deep into games, but two innings we can use a combination. And you know what? We are going to so uh, Robowski's going to get up and uh, let's see. Mets have a righty and then a lefty. So Robowski's getting up and he may come in to face the lefty um, Kawin Garrett. All right, so the infield's going to be playing in. The Cardinals here at the bottom of the fifth do not want to give up any more runs. There are no outs, and uh, stop does not run well. Neither does Milner, really. You know what? We're going to play the, the middle, uh, double play depth, and the corners, and here's the pitch. And a 42 will be an out of 14. It's double play if Sizemore has an S arm. I don't know that he does. He does not. So they're going to try for the double play. It's going to be a 4 6 fielder's choice. And uh, Run will score 5 to 3 Mets. Now, on that ground ball, um, didn't get through it because they were playing halfway. So I didn't have to roll, do that extra roll. Actually, it's not an extra roll. You just look at the first dive. It's a, 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 what is it, a 1 3 and 5. It gets through if it's an even number. It uh, the the um, the runners hold. All right, so here's Cleon Jones with the runner on first, one out, and Murphy, the pitch, and that's gonna be a 25 and a nine. That's lifted to right. Bernie Carbo and Melendez come together, and as Carbo calls him off for the second out, here comes Wayne Garrett, and that's gonna be all. For Murphy, out comes the manager. They're going to call in Al Rubowski, who at this point was not the main closer just yet. Later on, he became he becomes the closer. So that's why I'm going and kind of using him earlier in the game. He only had five uh, saves during this season. It was, uh, I think I said Sagi. I believe I said that. Diego Segui, who was the main closer who came out and collected most of the saves for that season. So Rubowski, we're going to roll to see what kind of stuff he has, and he's going to have his best stuff. He's a lefty. And he will be facing a lefty, Garrett. Now, uh, Garrett is the starter, so we're leaving him in in this situation. There's no reason to move him. Bottom of the fifth. Mets lead at five to three. Rabowski on the mound now takes his warm-up pitches and he's done. He's ready. He's ready to face uh, Garrett. So I believe this is the first year for Rabowski in the league. Pretty sure. Or was it seventy-two? Seventy-two was the first year. This I believe was the second year. All right, here's the pitch to get. And uh, Rabowski doesn't give up any home runs as uh, thirty-two, and that's going to be a ground ball. To first base and Torrey, because of that two on the white die, he's going to flip to the pitcher covering. Rabowski gets over there just ahead of Garrett, and uh, that retires the side. For the Mets, we're in the top of the sixth, and as you can see, Sadeki has kind of been beat up a little bit here. So we're going to go and look, take a look at uh, where he bats, and he will be coming up. Let's look at our bullpen and see how they're doing. Uh, Rest-wise, who do I have available? I have two guys available. McGraw and McAndrew to go one, two, three innings. I could pull it off. I'm going to push Sadeki to see one more inning just because I don't. I need him to do that. Um, and he's going to be facing Bernie Carbo. Here's a pitch, and that's going to be a 63, which is a swing and a miss. So Carbo chases and strikes out. So that's four or five in a row. That's a deck five in a row. That's a deck he's retired. And it's going to be Tyson, Mike Tyson, heavyweight champion of the world. Pitch. And a 25 is going to be lifted to center. Han, a few steps to his right, and uh, squeezes it for out number two. And um, 
why Rabowski's up, I don't know, but we're going to pinch hit with Rabowski. We're, uh, for Rabowski, we're going to bring up uh, Dave Campbell. Dave Campbell's at his limit, 21-21. So we're going to bring up Hughes to pinch hit. I'm surprised I didn't look at that, but uh, I didn't need Rabowski to go very much longer than that, really. All right, so we're looking for Hughes. We're only down by two, so we definitely want to. Uh, so Terry Hughes batted 214 and 14 at bats, three hits in that season. He's going to come up and bat. And here, here's the pitch. Lions and deals, 53 and 11. That's going to be a range check on the right fielder. Stobbs and nine, so that's going to drop in front of Stop for a single. Stop did not read that well, that ball that ball very well off the bat. He hesitated a bit, and that hesitation cost Sadeki a single. And out comes the manager, and uh, out comes the manager, and Sadeki's done. And Stop is kind of kicking at the uh, at the tufts of grass out in uh, right fields. I don't know if he wasn't paying attention or he was just thinking about uh, a big uh, prime rib with a mashed potato and some some broccoli. Um, uh, lefty, let's see, Rock is a lefty. So we're going to go with 25 saves. We're going to go um, to... Can McGraw go one, two? McGraw would have to go three in the third inning, and he's done that before. Do not be surprised if we push McGraw. Now, McGraw is not a dominant guy. Okay, definitely not a dominant guy. He's uh, six and three on the season with a 328 ERA. But he is a lefty, and that gives him advantages. So he will have his best stuff as well. So we shall see what happens here. All right, two outs. Hughes is on at first. The Cardinals trail by two. We're in the top of the sixth inning, and here's the pitch. Oh, that's going to be a drive. And strokes one to right center field, and neither Staub or Han will get to it, but Han. Cuts it off. And with that 18 two bases, Han has a strong arm in center, so they, he will stop at second base. Han does have a strong arm in center field, and that's going to have an effect on the advance in this case. And it's going to be Sizemore. So that's something you don't necessarily get in a lot of games where there's an assist rating and an effect on a runner, base runner advancement. So that's one of the uh, systems that this game covers very, very well and in a simple fashion. And it just adds, you know, a little bit more flavor to to the game. So he, uh, Han got to the ball quickly and uh, Hughes, uh, despite there being two outs and Hughes had um, a good jump was moving on contact. The ball was hit relatively hard, and Han, his arm is respected. He got to it quickly and was in position to throw. So uh, the third base coach decided, let's hold up Hughes and see if uh, Sizemore can uh, can uh, do something to get these two runs in. The Mets lead at 5-3, to three, but the Cardinals are uh, threatening here in the top of the six with two men on and two out. And here's the pitch from McGraw. And that's a 46 and a 1. But unfortunately, Ted Sizemore does not hit home runs. He only had one. So he does not get credit for a ballpark home run. And that becomes a code 8, which is a fly ball deep center field. Sizemore drives Han to the track, to the wall. And Han, in front of the wall, hauls it in to retire the side. So had Sizemore been a different hitter, if, had he been, um, let's see, Simmons 
or had he been Joe Torre, uh, the ball would have gone out. It would have been a home run. And the uh, Cardinals would have retaken the lead 6-3. to three. But uh, Mets got lucky there. And a uh, new pitcher is going to be Pena. We're going to bring in Pena here. He's got 62, he's got 26. And we're going to try to push him because he's low on his innings. Uh, so we can push him a couple of innings easily. So let's grab Pena out of the batch. Hope everybody's doing well out there. Remember to like and subscribe my channel. I've got a lot of hits and uh, a lot of looks, looksies. And then, um, so if, if you appreciate, you know, the information, my efforts towards the hobby, um, be, uh, you know, grateful and uh, and thank me with a, with a thumbs up. You know, I know people check it out to see if what I'm doing uh, is of interest to them. And uh, even though it may not be um, of interest to you on that day, for whatever reason, um, well, you know, you still checked it out and there was a possibility that it would interest you. So uh, let's see. Uh, Diego Seguiz come in. He's a righty, so that is a little bit different. He will also have his good stuff today. And it's going to be Duffy Dyer leading off. Duffy Dyer. Pleasant surprise today. Doesn't play very much, but he got the start, and he's delivered with three RBIs. Yes, sir. All right, here goes. Bottom of the sixth. Pena. Oh, no. Uh, where's Pena? I brought in Sigi. I, I grabbed Sigi's card. And uh, there it is. I needed to grab Orlando Pena's card, which is also a righty, and I already rolled, so... There we go. All right, so Orlando Pena, we rolled a 52. That's going to be on the an error check. And a 52 error check is going to be a third base error check. Reitz is like a four, so he will make that play. Bobbles it for a split second, but quickly gets control and fires a strike to Torrey at first. And they get uh, dire by 10, 10 feet. So here is uh, Ted Martinez, who picked up a big hit earlier in the game. And this time, he's going to lift one to center. Melendez comes over and squeezes it for the out, out number two. And here comes uh, McGraw, who I should have pulled a double switch with, but I did not. So we'll let him bat. All right, so here's his card. He does have a card. He batted 24 times, so he did come to bat. Only had a couple of starts that season. And a 15 will be a check swing. You but uh, call that on strikes and that retires the side. Easy inning for Orlando Pena. Here's Luis Menendez. Luis Menendez, top of the seventh. Mets lead it five to three. Mets five runs, seven hits, and no errors. They made the most of their hits for sure. The Cardinals with three runs, ten hits, and no errors. They've done the opposite and left uh, quite a few men on base. Here's Melendez leading off against McGraw with a 35, and that will be a fly ball to right and stop towards the line, and he makes the catch for the first out. So a late swing by Melendez and uh, slices it oppo, but stop was paying attention this time. Here's Ted Simmons, switch hitter, batting from the right side against the lefty McGraw, 13, and that will be bounced to third. Garrett up with it, over to first, two down. Next up is uh, Joe Torrey. Torrey batting 314. Torrey in 73, batting 287. So uh, he's doing better than expected. And the pitch of 45 will be a ground ball at uh, up the middle. And Martinez gets there, spins, throw to first in the dirt, and scooped out by Milner. 6-3. That retires the side. Go to the bottom of the seventh, seventh inning stretch. Take me out to the ballpark. Yes. 
Leading off for the Mets here in the bottom of the seventh will be Don Hahn, followed by Mian and Rusty Staub. And here they give you and their on base percentage. Han is at 220, Mian is at 316, and Stop at 404. Impressive, Rusty Stop. Garrett is at 344. All right, so uh, Orlando Pena with the pitch in the 42 will be a fly ball to left. And Brock, one away. Felix Mian up. Swings from the right side. Wines and deals. 35, and that's lifted to shallow center field with Melendez coming on. Two down. Rusty stop. Stop bats from the left side. It's got 15 home runs on the season. Stop hit 15 home runs on the season. The pitch. 13, and that's going to be line ripped hard at Melendez. Will he get there? Yes, a sliding catch. So a line drive out into center field, and Melendez read it perfectly and was able to make a nice sliding catch, robbing Legrand Orange. Here we go to top of the eighth inning. McGraw still in there, pitching well. He's going to face Reese. And a 51 is going to be an error check. And that's a high with a 16. Second base, Mian's like a 4 or a 2. So he's going to make that play easily. One down. Bernie Carbo now steps in the box against the left of McGraw. And a 66. And that's going to be a drive to right center field. Han and Stav after it and drops in in between them. It's going to be one hop off the wall. Digging for second is Carbo. Stav with the stronger arm. Throws a strike to Martinez at second attack, and he is safe with a double. One out double here in the top of the eighth by Bernie Carbo. So Mike Tyson now. Tyson, uh, 240 hitter, playing the whole season. But we have a pinch hitting situation next. We got mostly lefties, and then we got a couple of Stein and Campbell. But Campbell's already been used up and not very good anyway. But Stein, I want to hold off for the uh, pitching spot. And then because then the, the uh, lineup rolls over to the top of the lineup. So we're going to face Tyson here. Um, or do I go with like a lefty hitter? Like a McCarver, like a Cruz. Um, who aren't starting today because they don't want him to face lefties. And let me just look at uh, Tyson's card. Tyson hits lefties. Whereas the other guys, I don't think hit lefties at all. Like, let's take a quick uh, look up at Cruz. No, he hits righties. They all hit righties. Yeah, they all are strong against righties. But Tyson is better against lefties. Um, and he's got some hits on his card. Just he doesn't hasn't walked very often, so that's why he's got extra hits. All right, so let's see what happens. Uh, Tug McGraw with the runner on second base, looks over at Carbo, looks over at Dyer, gets a sign, shakes him off. He's ready for Tyson, sets and deals. And that's going to be a 46 with 17. So that's going to be a line drive base hit. Carbo will come around to score, and Tyson's going to try for two against Jones's arm. Let's look at Jones's arm. We have to use his assist rating now. And the left field, it's a four. So one to four, and he is out at second base, trying to stretch a single into a double, and he is out. Cleon Jones guns him down with a strike to Mian, and Mian puts on the tag, and Tyson drives in a run, but is out at second. Now, how do you do this? You hit detail. You hit single, and the runner uh, is going to be out at second. The other runner is safe at home. And it's going to be 7 2 4. The put out. You hit OK and you're set. Yes, sir. Now here's the pitcher with two outs. So that was a huge out. Cleon Jones. He is uh, showing off the cannon. And that was a strike to Mian and a perfect tag. Beyond position, straddling the bag in perfect position. 
moved out of the way as he laid down the tag to avoid the spikes of Tyson, who is known for his aggressive play, especially since he will go on to be heavyweight champion of the world in the 80s and 90s. So it's going to be us. You know, in this case, we're going to bring up a lefty simply because uh, we want to save that righty. Uh, should we save that righty? Um, we're going to have the top of the order in the ninth. So we're going to go with Stein here. See if we can get, keep any going. And we can bring up the top of the order. And we can kind of generate a two out, <coughs> excuse me, a two out rally, if you will. Oh, God, what did I do? What did I do with, uh, hold on a second. All right, so here we are with Bill Stein now. Um, Tyson did the right thing, trying to get the second base, trying to get the tying run into scoring position, and it was a close play at second. So there is no reason to criticize Mike Tyson for trying to stretch a single into a double here late in the game. Um, it would have put him on second base with, with only one out, and that would have been a perfect situation. Um, unfortunately, he faced, he met up with uh, a guy who was determined to prevent that, and that was Cleon Jones, who gunned him down at second base from the outfield. And uh, here's uh, Bill Stein, Tug McGraw. With the pitch, a 23 struck him out, and that retires the side. So Stein way ahead of the pitch. And McGraw mixing it up well. But the Cardinals pick up a run. It's 5-4. to four. We have an excellent game. I had a sense, a feeling that this game was going to... Um, be a good one, be a close one. That's why I started up in the second inning. So it's going to be Diego Seguiu's, like, and he will have his B stuff. Seguiu will. So uh, I usually use the post its just to focus, do a focus, 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 and I can kind of know exactly and, and, and look there instead of writing it down and all that. All right, so. Um, John Milner is leading it off here in the bottom of the eighth inning. The Mets would like a couple of insurance runs. See what happens. And here's the pitch. And that's going to be a 64, which is a swing and a miss. And he goes down on strikes. Cleon Jones next with the pitch. 23. And that's strike three. Back to back K's for Diego Segui. And Wayne Garrett bats from the left side. Two outs. 5-4 New York. The Mets with 5-7-0 and the Cardinals with 4-12 and 0. Oh, geez. And it's a 56. Checks his swing. They check with the third base umpire and he rings him up. Struck him out. So Diego Segui comes in and strikes out the side. Wow. All right, top of the ninth. Tug McGraw is still in there. Let's see how. He has 11 batters faced. Uh, on his card, how many has he gone? He's gone nine, so we're going to push him to finish this game off. Uh, he's going to face the top of the order. So he's going to have his work cut out for him facing Brock Sizemore Simmons. Oh, no, Brock Sizemore uh, Melendez and Simmons. And Brock batting 321. Brock had a good season, about 297. He's got a hit in this game already. Here's the pitch from McGraw, 22. That's going to be ball four. He walks, and of course, always a threat to steal. We're going to roll that one for a pickoff possibility. Oh, and we got a pickoff possibility, but he's a weak arm, unfortunately. So it's going to be a low result. A low result here to pick off Brock because uh, McGraw did not pick off many with a W arm. Here's the pickoff. W arm is a one to three. 18 to 20 is going to be a a possible throwing error. Here's the here's the roll. 
The thrower to first and a 16, he is back in safely. So that's good. So that prevents the steal right now. And um, keeps him close. McGraw keeps him close. And it's Sizemore. Sizemore's excellent hit and run guy. And I think we're going to put that into play right here. So let's do that. And there goes the runner. And the swing by Sizemore, who lifts one to center field on a line. And it's Han right there. So it's a line drive to center. Got it up too much, trying to get it down into the ground. And a line drive, they're going to have a chance for Brock at, I just remembered that, on a hit and run, a line drive. They're going to have a Brock for a, a play for Brock at first. And the, mil the tag by Milner, he's out. Double play, line drive. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, actually, wait, did I do a hit and run? I looked at the wrong result. My, my bad. No, I erased all that. None of that happened. All right, so what really happens is, oh, it's, uh, no, it's a fly out to center. Okay, it's a fly out to center, unless it's a 61. And it wasn't a 61, so it's, there's, the, uh, he's safe at first. So Han tries to throw Brock out at first, but he, not in time. So it's one away, and up comes Melendez. Luis Melendez. And here's the pitch to Melendez, a 26, and against the lefty, that's going to be a base hit. And a 9 is going to send a W, no, there's no W arm in right, that's Staub. He's got an S arm, so they're not going to challenge Staub's arm at in right field. So Brock will stop at second base, yikes. Now there is a manager um, kind of ordered uh you know, stolen bases, I use the plus sign, which is the automatic system. Um, so it's first and second, one out, and uh, we're kind of, we're going to have to start reducing McGraw here. Let's see, let's see what we got in the bullpen. Oh boy, we're doomed. So McGraw is going to be reduced by one column into his B column. And we'll allow him a couple of batters in his B column. We're not going to all of a sudden drop him to zero. Um, and Simmons is up. So let's see if we can pick up a double play, which would be, man, that would be outstanding. And Simmons hits into a ton of double plays. So uh, McGraw looks over at Brock, who's got a good lead. He is the tying run at second base, Melendez, at first. McGraw gets the sign from Duffy Dyer, who does have a good arm. Here's the pitch. And that's a, that's trouble. I'll tell you right now, that's going to be a drive. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. That's going to be a drive in the gap, in the left center field gap. Jones is there, and no, just beyond his glove, and that's going to roll to the wall. And let's see if Melendez can score on this. And he will come around to score, and the Cardinals have taken a 6-5 to five lead. Yikes. Huge clutch double here with one out in the top of the ninth by Ted Simmons on that 66 roll. Just missed a home run. Um, and it's, that's going to bring up Torrey, and that's going to be it for McGraw. Unfortunately... McGraw could not get through the three innings we needed. And uh, we are going to check uh, for a double switch. Yeah, we're going to have to pull a double switch. So we're going to go here to the two arrows. And we are going to third base. We're going to play. We're going to play Boswell at third base. He'll bat there. And then from the bullpen, we're bringing McAndrew, who is a cleanup guy, really. And uh, so, bad news for the Mets. Let's see if uh, McAndrew can uh, have his better stuff. Does not how oh boy, he will have his worst stuff, which is a nightmarish stuff. 
and the Mets are in trouble here in the top of the ninth. They've lost the lead on a two-run double by Ted Simmons. And with Torrey up, they're going to give him the intentional walk to bring up Reitz. Hopefully Reitz will hit the double play. We'll get out of this inning. Uh, and we got to grab Crane Pool as well. Because Crane, uh, no, not Crane Pool. Who was playing third? I said Boswell. Boswell will be the ninth place hitter. He'll be due up next inning, I believe. Kenny Boswell. Struggling this season, but uh, has hits on his card. Especially against uh, righties. So let's see what happens here. Reitz, first and second. Simmons, the second. Torrey at first. McAndrew on the mound, replacing McGraw. McGraw. Still owns those two runners, uh, but McGraw went 2.2. Five hits, three runs, one walk, one strikeout. And it's Kenny Reed's here's the pitch. And that's going to be a 53 with one struck him out. So McAndrew strikes out Reed's with a fastball. And that brings up the lefty Bernie Carbo. Trouble. Bernie Carbo was a 286 hitter on the season, batting 280 in our replay. And uh, so McAndrew will have his work cut out from here. And here's the pitch. Sets and deals. Snake eyes. And that's going to be ball four. So he, he, he approached him very, very cautiously and uh, ended up walking him. Probably uh, McAndrew's best choice here because now he faces Tyson, who's a 240 hitter. But, uh, Tyson uh, singled home run earlier and then got thrown out trying to stretch a single into a double in the eighth inning. So he's got another opportunity to come up big here, to come up clutch with the bases loaded and two outs. And the pitch from McAndrew, and that is ball four, and that's going to walk in a run, seven to five. So Tyson shows some patience. And now it's Sagi is up, and Sagi is their closer. So we're going to allow Sagi to bat with two outs. Plus, I don't know that uh, they have anybody else. We, we used Pena. We used Rabowski. We used several pitchers. So we're going to allow uh, the relief pitcher to bat, uh, Diego Segui. Let's find his card quickly if we can. I have all my hitters and my hitters and all my batters and my batters. Uh, I'm sorry, my uh, pitchers my pitchers. But um, sometimes uh, I don't go beyond that to separate. I know some guys do so they can find stuff faster. So Sagi pitching 85 games. So he has to have a bat. He must have a card. Otherwise, we'll just use his standard, his standard card, his... Uh, There he is. Okay, he was, at the, he was the last guy in, in the whole pack. You don't get all the players here, so you can see that. All right. Sorry for the delay, but Sagi's up. Not a very good hitter. Probably going to make it out, but you never know. Here's the pitch from McAndrew, who really sucks, and that's going to be ball four. So he walks Sagi. That brings in another run. And now the lineup turns over, and it's Lou Brock. Lou Brock today has had a good day. Brock is two for four. Pitch and a 54. That's going to be an unusual type result. And it's going to take, send us to the Wilder chart, which says runner picked off on a catcher roll. Arm is one to four. So one to four, we pick off the runner and we pick him off. Third base, Carbo. So Dyer throws a strike to Boswell. Boswell sneaks in behind Carbo and they throw, they, they pick off Carbo at third base. Pick off three, uh, pick off catcher. Um, we'll do that. Oh, pick off third base. I'm not sure what some of those mean. Let's see. Hold on a second. Let's see what it says. Strike out, pick off. Okay, that's not what we want to do. All right. Uh, and Sigi walked. So we got to go back. We got to walk Sigi again. That's um, there it is. Okay, Sigi walked. Brock is up. There's gonna be a pick off at third base. Catcher pick off. Let's see what it says. Sigi out at third in the inning. 
doesn't let us pick off the runner. Let me see if I could pick off the runner at third in a different way. Mm -hmm. I can't do it there. File out. So the only it'll allow the pitcher to pick off the catcher pick off at the first base, but we we can pick off the first guy at first base. It doesn't really matter. Pick off first base. See, there is a pick off third base, but that's a pitcher pick off. This one's a catcher pick off. So let's try that. Yeah, pick off. Okay, Carbo out at third. It doesn't say who did it. Okay, all right, that's fair enough. And uh, all right, so the Mets trail by three. The Cardinals pick up four big runs in that inning on uh, on three walks, an intentional walk, a big double, and a single. And um, it's going to be Duffy Dyer leading off. We're going to hit with uh, the crane pool. is going to pinch hit. Oh, boy. Okay. And Diego Segui with pitch. Crane pool, 3-5. And that is popped up. Left, uh, left side reads in fair ground. Right behind the uh, the dirt on the outfield grass makes the catch for the first out. Next up is Martinez, Ted Martinez, Martinez today. One out now, so the Mets are down to the last two outs. Martinez today is uh, one for three. Right, okay, two sixty six. Here's the pitch, and th another thirty five back to back thirty fives. That's lifted to center. On the run is Melendez. Will that get away from him? No, he tracks it down. A nice read by Melendez, showing off some range out there in center field. He is a good center fielder, above average center fielder for sure. And here's Boswell, Kenny Boswell. And he's the last hope for the Mets here with two outs in the bottom of the ninth. It's shade. People are starting to move out. Uh, well, uh, they started moving out in that big four-run ninth inning, but uh, the last few stragglers are starting to stand up and slowly uh, move towards the exits with their neck turned towards the field. So here's Boswell. Oh, when we had an 11, so it would have been an out. That's lifted to center, racing in. Is Melendez, will he get there? Yes, and the ball game is over. So Diego Segui is going to get the victory, 8-4. to four. Tug McGraw takes the loss. He's 6-4. and four. Ted Simmons is the MVP. What a surprise. I will have to collect this box score and share it out. That uh, tells you where it goes. Just follow that. It's the instructions, and once then you just save it, and you always have access to it. But anyway, um, yeah, Simmons went 2-5, for five, drove in two big runs. The Cardinals picked up 14 hits on the Mets, and the Mets picked up seven on the Cardinals. Mets did not have a hit for a while, I think for about six or seven innings. I'm not sure when their last hit was. Well, I can find out. Let's find out when the Mets had their last hit. Let's, let's look at the fourth. Yep, they had a single in the fourth. In the fifth, they had a single. So from the sixth, seventh, oh, wow. Okay, the sixth. And the seventh, and then the eighth, and then finally the ninth. So the the, the Mets uh, were retired twelve batters consecutively. Their last hit was in the fifth inning. It was uh, Rusty Staub with a single, and. Um, Six, seven, eighth, and ninth innings. The Mets could not manage a base knock, so it's easy to understand why. Like, I don't think they could manage even a base runner. I don't even think they got a walk in those innings. That's the sixth. That's the seventh. That's the eighth. So what a job by the Cardinal bullpen. So they really should pick up the MVP of this game. Anyway, Tony Porter, Cards and Dice TV. Uh, formerly Cards and Dice TV, now Tabletop Baseball Dice uh, or Dice Tabletop Digest, Dice Baseball Digest, all those names. And uh, remember to like and subscribe. Uh, good talk to you guys, and I will see you soon.